Thank you, everybody, for attending. Uh, my name is Tan Meteo. I am the RFQ coordinator for the Food Systems um, RFQ. I have quite a few colleagues uh, with me here today. They are all here to support different functions for this public meeting. So we do have folks who are uh, helping with TA. If any questions, uh, if you can't get to this meeting online, Janelle Jackson, my colleague who just introduced herself, can assist you if you have any issues around that. Um, I definitely have Leslie, I have Nelly, I have uh, Adrian who's here. You know, we're all here to help answer any of the questions. If we have any contractual questions later, um, they are definitely here to support all those functions. Um, with that, I'm going to just go ahead and roll into the RFQ. So if you are new to any RFP and RFQ processes, just uh, want to let you know that information sessions like this is designed to help to walk you through some of the nuts and bolts uh, of the investment process. Um, you will notice that uh, we do have two publications in this process. Uh, we have a guidelines and then we have an application. Uh, there are two different parts to this thing. So I want to walk through with you guys today uh, what involved, what is involved in the guidelines and then the application itself. In the guidelines, we typically stipulate things like the timeline. We stipulate things like what we are interested in funding. Um, and then you'll see things like uh, what you will be reporting for performance measures if you are awarded the contract. And then for application is really the nuts and bolts of the application process itself. You know, we want to make sure that you submit all the required paperwork. How do you submit it? Um, things like appeals process. And then where do you get help if you encounter any issues? So those are the things that we will definitely talk through today. Uh, we will also designate some time at the end of this presentation to answer any of your questions. So if you don't mind, if you have any questions regarding this process, just hang on tight till the end. We will definitely designate time for that. Uh, and then with that, we're just going to roll into guidelines. I want to start off first with uh, who can apply for this uh, set of dollars. So you will also find this full set of information on our HSD funding website. Um, and one of my colleagues will post it up uh, in chat for you later, and you can definitely get access to the funding website information where all the guidelines and application paperwork is. Uh, but just first off, just want to make sure that you are eligible to apply, make sure that you have uh, the Washington State Business License and then the Seattle Business License. Uh, you must have a federal tax ID and e EIN number, and then uh, you have to be incorporated as one of those three listed below. So either as a 501c3 organization or federal for, federally recognized or Washington state recognized Indian tribe. Or then lastly, if not, you should have to have some sort of public legal entity status to be eligible for this set of funding. So if you need further information, this document lives in our HSD funding web page uh, under what we call the agency minimum eligibility requirements. And then next up, very importantly, is the timeline. So we released this RFP last Tuesday, uh, and then we're hosting the information session this afternoon. You do have a timeline to ask questions. So there's a window for you to ask any questions to us. We will only accept questions via email only. So up till March 27 at 5 p.m., you can email me any of the questions you have regarding this RFP process. Uh, again, we will also address some of the questions later after this session. Um, and then most importantly, make sure you observe the application deadline, and that is April 11 by 12 noon. So in essence, uh, any applicants who are interested in competing for this process, you have about six weeks between the time we release this RFQ to the time this application is uh, due. So just make sure you observe the deadline. Again, we cannot repeat it enough. Uh, Please don't be late. We really cannot entertain if applications are late. So uh, please just make sure you know the deadline for this. And then once uh, the application is due and turned in, 
uh, we usually typically hand all the applications over to a rating panel. And they do also have a window of time to ask applicants um, certain questions. Uh, and, and this, I will explain a little bit about the clarification to your re narrative responses in terms of what it entails. But there is a window of time that we do allow the raters um, to come back to you with certain questions. We intend to notify any agencies who are successful in this competition uh, during the week of uh, June 12th. So just note that uh, we might be notifying you during that week. And if you're successful, your contract will start January 1st of 2024. We do want to say that these dates might be subjected to change. So make sure that you routinely just check the HSD funding website if there are any changes that will that's where it will be posted. All right. Um, dollar amount. We do have about a little under $1.8 million for this RFQ process. And what we intend to uh, fund is we intend for agencies to apply and provide uh, the following services. So we do want you to provide services to the Seattle Food Committee and the Meals Partnership Coalition Networks with the following service, three service areas. So service area number one is nutritious food sourcing, what we probably know better as bulk buy. And we do have about $1.12 million in that pot. Um, and then the second thing we would like to procure is for transportation of the procured food to the respective uh, participating food banks and meals program. We have $461,000 available in that category. And then the last uh, service area that we are interested in procuring is to provide SFC and MPC with the network administrative support. And we have about $180,000 available. Um, just note, these are all estimated amounts based on historical precedents. And so right now, this are how we're intending to break it down. And the total amount available for this whole entire process is about $1.768 million. Uh, this is an open and competitive process. You do have to apply to be eligible for consideration. And also just note, uh, application doesn't mean that you will be automatically awarded. You do have to compete against other interested applicants for the funding. Please submit only one application per agency. Um, as if you have a chance to review the uh, paperwork already, you will, you will note that uh, we are asking you to state which service areas you are interested in applying for. So of those three service area, make sure you state clearly which ones you are interested in providing services and for which particular network or networks. So uh, as an agency, you are allowed to apply for more than one service area if that's your area of interest. And you can either choose to work with SFC, MPC, or, or both of those networks. So you are allowed the options to choose that and just make sure that you clearly indicate that in your proposal. Uh, our intent is to fund a maximum of two agencies per service area. So that means uh, one per network. So in some instances, we might do, um, um, we might fund one agency to work with, uh, say, Seattle Food Committee on procuring uh, food in bulk to SFC and another agency to procure food in bulk for MPC. Uh, and then same with the transportation and same with the network support. At the same time, we might, depending on the applications that come in, uh, we might end up also maybe just perhaps funding one agency to provide those services to either SFC and MPC at the same time. So you all really uh, will vary depending on the applications that come in through the application process. Uh, if you are an agency and you are intending to apply for multiple service areas, just make sure that you're only submitting one application. Just for clarity, just do one application. You submit separate budgets for your application. Uh, you will see, um, especially um, in the uh, paperwork that we have posted, you will see separate uh, 
Excel spreadsheet templates available and they're all titled separately. So make sure you submit the, your budgets based on the service areas that you're interested in. And then lastly, if you have decided to go in collaboration with multiple agencies, two or more agencies, just make sure the lead agencies submit the application. Because this sets of dollars, the $1.7 million is from Seattle General Fund, we ask that the services have to take place within Seattle city limits. Uh, this is a very specific set of dollars looking for very specific services. Um, we're asking agencies to make sure that they have experience uh, operating bulk food purchase or, or trans and or transportation of bulk food. Again, um, as well, uh, regards to insurance and licensing and certification, we ask that you maintain and have all those applicable licenses in place. And the staff should also reflect the communities that they are being served. If you're successful in this uh, award, your contract will start January 1st. We anticipate, we typically anticipate funding to last for four years. You will renew every 12 months. Uh, this is definitely subjected to the availability of the general fund situation as well as your contractual performance. So um, this will again be reviewed every 12 months. And then one thing I want to highlight, uh, HSD is uh, looking into working with an independent uh, entity to do some research on the funding allocations. Um, so just anticipate depending on the results of the research, your contractual allocation dollar amount may be adjusted in 2025. All right, so this part of the process is really talking a lot more about what we're anticipating uh, you to do if you are interested in doing nutritious food sourcing, uh, formerly known better as bulk buy. We're looking uh, at you to source nutritious and culturally relevant food for approximately 28 uh, SFC and 28 MPC partners. We ask that you work with the networks uh, on meeting their annual work, uh, annual orders and that you work with their uh, subcommittees on meeting any specific and customized needs. We also uh, uh, expect that you have a written set of procedures uh, on things like food sourcing, allocations, anything in regards to online ordering, uh, food that's being declined, so that uh, you, there's written protocols and procedures around those things. Please also be uh, prepared to uh, attend any of the coalition meetings and work with the networks on efficiencies, uh, workflow efficiency, any cost, cost savings measures as well. Um, and then one really important thing, uh, please make sure that you have um, some type of customer service um, mechanism to track and resolve customer service and uh, related issues uh, so that we can help to make sure that um, the, the system is working efficiently. These are typical performance measures that we usually will negotiate at your contracting process, but I wanna just quickly go through um, with you in case if you're interested. Uh, for nutritious food sourcing, we're looking at uh, specific things around for quantity. We're looking at things like measuring uh, how many pounds of food or how many servings of nutritious food that you're procuring, and then how many uh, unduplicated food banks and or meals program that will be receiving those food that you're purchasing food for on a monthly basis. Um, and then for quality, again, you know, this is all about numbers and percentages. Uh, people, uh, re the number and percentage that, re that receive the type of uh, and the amount of nutritious food order for the calendar year, and then the number and percentage reporting that they are satisfied with the quality that's being provided. Uh, this will all be done via an annual customer service survey. And then impact is again about uh, the percentage reporting that the food that's being sourced helped them uh, provide a constant and predictable source of food for their clients. If you're interested in uh, competing for the transportation uh, part of dollars, 
this is what we're uh, anticipating that you you will be providing. So you're providing transportation for primarily procured food and uh, including federal and state food assistance for approximately those 28 food banks and, uh, and or 28 meals programs. Um, we're hoping that you can maintain a cost-effective food transportation system and that you work also work closely with the food banks and meals program to, de uh, to develop a equitable delivery schedule. And then also lastly, just to make sure that you are transporting food safely and timely and that you are also resolving any customer service related issues promptly. Performance measures for this is somewhat similar to the performance measures for the nutritious food sourcing, except this is a little bit more catered to uh, transportation and delivery. So we're talking about pounds of food delivered and transported. Um, the second one is similar to the uh, the nutritious food sourcing is about uh, reporting the number of unduplicated food banks and meals program participating. Um, and then quality is about um, how many percent or how many of them are satisfied with the quality of services provided. And then they receive their orders at the scheduled time. Um, that's, and then impact is about uh, percentages of respondents report that transportation of procured food is beneficial to their program operations. Uh, the very last service area that we are trying to procure services for is for network administrative support. So this is um, with regards to providing SFC and MPC networks with coordination and administration. Uh, you, are, you are asked to attend uh, the nutritious food sourcing subcommittee meetings. We also ask that you work closely with all the food banks and meals program and all the contractual partners to resolve any uh, service related issues. We're looking at you to establish partnerships with other food security and justice organizations. And then lastly, to provide train, uh, uh, food equity related trainings and resources, and then also support any other data collection efforts. These are the performance measures uh, if you're interested in doing the piece on network support. Uh, we're looking at you at uh, reporting the number of trainings or workshops that you are hosting, any of the events that you convene to discuss emerging issues and best practices. And then again, quality is really about evaluating how many of your attendees are satisfied with uh, the workshops that you're hosting and the services that you're providing. And then lastly, just looking at how many percent are reporting uh, having increased knowledge in combating food insecurity issues and then uh, increased knowledge in how race and inequity uh, impact access to food. So those will all be negotiated at the contracting process. All right, um, we're moving on to the application section of the um, RFQ, and these are going to be covering a lot of nuts and bolts of uh, the application itself. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to go through the application section, I, just, um, I want to flag certain things for you. So if you look at the narrative which you are required to complete, you will notice that a few different sections. Most importantly, just ensure that um, for every applicant, you are required to complete the core narrative uh, part of the uh, uh application and the core narrative will cover things like your organization history, things like your data management, things like your physical management, um, the budget. Um, so that itself constitutes 50 points. So make sure if you are applying for this process, please make sure that you do complete the core narrative um, section of the questions in there, they do constitute 50 points. And then depending on which service areas you are interested in competing for, you will pick and choose which sections you will answer those questions. And those questions, those sections have different weightage. So you will notice nutritious food sourcing uh, has a total 50 points uh, um, 
total. And then same with transportation of procured food is also 50 points. For network admin, admin support, that's 30 points. The total possible scores, if you compete for all these sections, is 180 points. However, um, not every agency will probably be competing for every single uh, service area, so it all really depends. Uh, so, for example, if you are agency A, you might just be interested in competing for just the uh, bulk buy or the nutritious food sourcing. So your, your total possible score is out of 100 points. Whereas for agency B, uh, you might be interested in doing both nutrition food sourcing as well as transportation. So your total score is 150. So these are just examples of the various different variations of uh, possible scores for different agencies, depending on which service areas they are selecting to compete in. Um, the rating panel will definitely, of course, be um, doing this as a percentage because everybody's possible score is very different. The other important thing for everybody to remember is there are different page limits to uh, the application process. So, and that will be dependent on which service areas you are uh, ap applying to. So just to make sure that everybody's clear, you do have to turn in certain required documentation. So attachment two, which is the uh, application cover sheet is what you do need to turn it in. Please make sure to sign the application. Um, this is where you fill in your agency information, your address, who's the ED, who's the agency contact person, stuff like that. You will find the template again in uh, the application uh, document posted in the HSD, on the HSD website. You will also see various requests for um, your uh, program budget so that those are attachment three and four respectively and we do have excel templates as well that are being posted for ease and convenience for you to use those excel templates just meet, please make sure to use the accurate template uh, depending on the service areas that you are applying for and then lastly, with regards to the narrative response, uh, the core narrative, which everybody needs to um, answer, has a three-page limit. The nutritious food sourcing has a five-page limit. In addition to the five-page limit, you are asked to turn in two other documents. We are asking you to turn in a customer service request tracking to example, and a program policies and procedure example. Uh, those two requested documents here, we are is not going to be um, counted in the five-page maximum limit. If you're applying for transportation of procured food, that's a three-page maximum limit, and then for network admin support, that's a two-page maximum. In addition, if you are proposing to partner or to subcontract, please make sure that you have signed letters of commitment from those agency directors or any of the authorized representative. Uh, that includes if you do not say have a 501c3 status or any of those, um, uh, you don't have a legal entity as yet and you're using a fiscal sponsor, to apply towards this funding, make sure you have a signed letter from the agency and indicate that who is your fiscal sponsor. All these uh, additional documents do not account to the page limits. And we are asking you, please do not include any materials that were not that's not being requested in this application. Um, this may or may not pertain to this process, but please do also do not um, submit to us any private personally identifiable information uh, in your application as well. That would be things like uh, client's name, date of birth, addresses, things like that. Okay, how do we um, submit your application? Uh, you can, we are allowing you to submit your application via two process. 
one, you can do it through the HSD portal uh, or you can do it via email. Just please select one and not both. Uh, we definitely have had situations in the past where some agencies submit via two, uh, both two methods. And it's a little confusing for us because sometimes you might have made changes throughout the way and then you submit via uh, the two different submission methods. And it's a little bit hard for us to discern which is the one that you want us to use for rating purposes. So we're asking again for you to just use one, finalize, uh, proofread all your application before you decide which one, and then just submit through one of the methods here listed. Please don't fax it into us anymore. Um, I would say, just to be honest, hardly anybody monitor the fax machine anymore here. Uh, don't mail in. Uh, we also don't have a full-time person uh, anymore in uh, the HSD front desk to allow in-person submissions, so please don't do that. Uh, at all, the applications should come in via the online portal or via email. Uh, again, can't stress this enough, please submit it uh, on time. Please make sure that you have all your necessary attachments and the paperwork that we're asking for and submit it by April 11 at 12 noon. We will not be responsible if your applications are not received by the deadline. And again, you do have to apply in order to be considered for, for funding purposes. Uh, you can find this address um, listed in the application paperwork. Just make sure that you Try to upload any of this, uh, your application early in case there is any uh, internet uh, issues. Um, I have Comcast at home. Sometimes we do have issues. Uh, just make sure that you allow ample time for you to submit your application. Um, the HSD online portal is not one where you can create a profile and you can save your work and then you come back later on and then you submit. It's not one of those savvy platform. You just have to go online, type in your information and details, and then attach all the paper at one go and just submit that way. So it's one of those uh, software uh, at this point. Uh, there are certain restrictions into the file in terms of file size, so make sure you are aware of that as well. And you will get an automatic ping once you successfully uploaded all the information um, onto the portal. Um, I have listed here. Uh, colleagues uh, information and email address in case if you have any issues with the portal. Uh, Sola Plumacher, my colleague, will be able to assist you. Just note, please don't email her 10 minutes before the deadline. Just make sure that you give her plenty of time to help you with any technical issues. So Sola's email address is listed here. The second method to submit your application is via just a simple email. Um, this is the email address listed here. Uh, and then you just attach all your uh, email attachments to the email and submit it to us. We do ask that you title the um, application, your sorry, your email appropriately. There are, if you notice, we have maybe like five different food systems RFP processes now in place in addition to a few from our HSD aging and disability uh, division. They also have uh, quite a few different food systems related uh, RFQ going on. Just make sure you title the right uh, process so that uh, they know who to funnel these applications to. Um, otherwise, you might go to the wrong coordinator. So just heads up, make sure you um, you titled your uh, application process appropriately. Uh, you will get an email acknowledgement once uh, we have received your email application. All right, um, what happens after you have submitted your application? So what we do is we would have convened a rating committee and this rating committee are the folks who will be reviewing and scoring your written applications. Uh, earlier on, I mentioned that uh, there's a window of time that uh, the rating committee can come back to you to ask you certain questions. So what happens is the rating committee can come and ask you certain clarifying questions. Um, 
And I will talk a little bit about what that constitutes, but there's a window of time. Just make sure that we might contact you or whoever that's listed as the agency contact person with questions um, if there are any for your agency. The rating committee uh, is the body who is responsible for making the funding recommendations. So they will make the recommendations to our HSD director. And ultimately, our HSD director has the final decision making uh, powers to uh, recommend and approve those recommendations. Uh, once that is finalized, we will notify all the applicants the week of June 12. Again, uh, in case there are any uh, changes to the dates, the dates will be posted um, on the HSD website under timeline. You are also allowed to appeal the process, and we will talk a little bit about that. Um, and then uh, once process, the appeals process is over, that's when the final notification will take place. Right. With regards to clarification to the narrative response, so sometimes, like I mentioned, raters may want to clarify your responses. Uh, we do definitely have instances where uh, sometimes applicants might have changed, uh, for instance, uh, certain numbers um, in one section of their response. So, for example, they may end up saying, we will be procuring 6,000 pounds of food, and then somewhere else they may say 6,500 6, pounds of food. So, you know, things like that, that is unclear. Um, so sometimes you might get questions about which is the actual number that you're proposing. Uh, we are not allowed to ask you to submit uh, attachments or documents that were requested and you did not turn in. So that will not be constituted as a clarification. Uh, again, just make sure you double check all the attachments uh, that are required and that you turn them all in. Uh, the window of time that is uh, open for clarification to the narrative response is uh, April 17 to May 12. So whoever is listed as the agency primary contact person will be the person who will be receiving this set of questions, if there are any for your agency. And you do have three business days to respond. Um, all the responses will go back to the rating panel and they will consider your responses and then it will be part of your scoring. Appeals process. So we do allow appeals to happen under certain conditions. So the grounds for appeals will be things like there is a violation uh, in, in accordance to our own HSD funding process manual, and you will be able to click on this particular link, and you can also see, uh, find this manual on our website as well. Uh, the second uh, grounds for appeals is we, for some reason, violate our own policies or we fail to adhere to the guidelines that is published in this particular opportunity. Usually, if you do want to start an appeal, you have to, your, there's certain deadlines you should observe. You have to uh, initiate your appeals process within uh, four business days from the time you receive the written award or denial status. Uh, and then, in turn, our HSD director has four business days to consider and make the final decision. And the HSD, HSD director's decision is final. Uh, in the interim period, when there's an appeals process, we might have to uh, do some interim uh, negotiations to start services, but um, no contracts will be executed until the final appeals process has closed. Some general tips. Um, Try make sure you follow the required format. We do ask that you uh, format it in letter size. Please do 11 size point font. Try not to do something small. It's really hard to read. And just also make sure that you uh, observe all the page limits that are stipulated. You don't have to retype all the questions. You just take up significant real estate in your response. You don't have to do that. Uh, please make sure you answer all parts of the questions. Uh, you will also find that for the questions, we allocated individual uh, points to all those questions, so you can use your own discretion to look at the scoring criteria and answer those questions. 
We also provided different templates. For example, there's an Excel template uh, for your budget. So just make sure you use that and please just double check your numbers. Have someone help to review your application. Um, like for example, I mentioned earlier, sometimes we do see the budgets requested on one page is different from the budget listed in somewhere else. Sometimes the number of clients served or the pounds of food might be different because you might have edited it on one page and forgot about it on a different section. Just have somebody else help to review that. That would be super helpful. And then kind of lastly, just make sure you allow plenty of time to submit your application. Um, we definitely um, would hate to have to turn down somebody who is late for the process. Uh, we have to be fair and equitable to all applications that comes in. So we definitely want to make sure that if you put in the effort, you please submit your application on time. Uh, we do have an uh, attachment one uh, just as a, as a checklist for you to use to visually note that you have turned in all the required attachments. So use attachment one as a friendly tool. Um, I mentioned earlier, you do have the opportunity to email any questions to me about this RFP, RFQ process. So here's my email address. Um, any of the questions that are being submitted to me via email will also be posted online for equity purposes for all other interested applicants to review as well. And we are required to post them within five business days. Uh, only official written uh, answers or written answers are considered official responses. So make sure if you are applying for this process, just check um, back on the HST funding opportunity website uh, on a routine basis to look for any additional new questions that are being posted and answers being posted. Uh, the deadline for receiving any of your questions is March 27 by 5 p.m. And then lastly, this is uh, Sola's uh, email address. If you have any questions about your submission issues or uh, technical difficulties, uh, Sola will be um, assisting you with that. I think this is the time for us to move on to questions. Um, I'm going to ask my colleagues to help me review the chat if there have been any questions that have been posted so far in chat. And if anybody has um, any questions related to the RFQ, please also feel free to come off mute and post your question to the group. I apologize. I can only see some of you um, in my view. It's hard to tell who has a hand raised. I can just see a hand. I can't see who exactly raised their hand. Yeah, Tanmay, so Beverly has her hand raised. And before we go to Beverly, I'm just gonna read a question from Sylvie in the chat and the response in case anybody is phoning in and can't read the chat. So the question is, so if an agency is applying for multiple service areas, they will need to submit not only separate budgets, but also the responses for each of the service area narratives for which they were applying, right? And that's a great question. The response is correct plus the core response for all applicants. Thank you, that's exactly right. If you are intending to apply for multiple service areas, you just need to um, basically answer the core narrative once, and then you pick and select which other service areas you are interested in applying for and answer the questions based on those respective service areas. The, your your page allocation will differ based on the, the different areas that you are applying for as well. Great, thanks Tanmay. And then Beverly has a hand up. Thank you. Is an agency allowed to submit um, as an individual agency under one area, but as a collaboration in another area? Thank you, Beverly. So the question is, if you are interested in applying as a main entity, can you also be in a collaboration with others? Yes, uh, Beverly, however, 
if you are if you are intending to apply as an organization on its own, in the collaborative, you are probably not going to be the lead agency. Thank you. Are there any additional questions? Chris? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm with Farmstand Local Foods. And uh, I'm a bit new to this program, and we work with a lot of local farms, so I thought I'd just pop in. but. I don't know much about the program, so I was hoping in as succinct a fashion to not waste anyone's time, I could maybe ask what the little bit of the history of the program is and um, how it functioned. Um, I'm also open to any like publicly, you know, public um, uh, articles or otherwise that could help build some context for me. Um, that's a great question. Um, do do I have any colleagues in the room who can speak to the history of the program? Sorry, Chris, I am I'm not new to HSD, but I'm definitely new to the Food War too. So there are definitely colleagues who are definitely more well versed than myself in the food and meals program world. So are there any folks who can help to answer some of Chris's question here? Sure, Tanme, I can take a first pass and then I'd love if any of our community-based partners who have history um, with what uh, is called the emergency feeding system um, would chime in as well if I miss anything. So Chris, this um, body of work has decades of history in the city of Seattle. The Meals Partnership Coalition and Seattle Food Committee are networks that represent a collective of meal programs and food banks respectively, and they've been ex in existence for decades. And um, it's what the city, uh, for better or worse, has called the emergency food system. So this is the social safety net for um, food security in the city of Seattle and um, MPC Meals Partnership Coalition and SFC um, network approximately, uh, I think MPC is maybe up to 60 uh, meal programs. Beverly, you can correct me if I'm wrong. And SFC is about 28 food banks. This uh, portfolio supports funds respectively about 28 meal programs and 28 food banks at the system level. So it's, um, as Tan may mentioned, transportation, food distribution, bulk, what we call bulk buy, as well as network staffing. So that monthly, um, the collective can come together and share resources, learn and train. Um, next year, it is intended that we then mate this systems funding with direct services to uh, food banks and meal programs. So it's uh, essentially a two-part um, procurement uh, focused on systems as well as direct services to food and meals. It used to be in the not too distant past that we do one large RFP um, for both the systems work and the direct service work, but it's just gotten with the sweetened beverage tax and other types of funding uh, a much larger and really found a need to do the systems piece separately sequence then with the direct service piece. So um, I would love if anybody else on the meeting has some history because there's folks like Beverly and Jamila and Kyle. So I think a whole bunch of people with uh, uh, experience. Anybody want to add to that? You are great. <laughs> exactly. You did it exact. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, Beverly. Did that help, Chris? Uh, yeah, it definitely did. Um, I think, uh, well, I don't want to make this all about me, but maybe just answer one more clarifying. So 
a lot of the funding was meant to support like this when you say systems work the collective nature of providing services you know all of that which um yeah maybe i'll maybe I'll, i feel like i have a lot of questions maybe i'll either find the right person to talk to offline about it because um yeah just want to make sure we apply we can be helpful and you know we're not duplicating or anything so thank you yeah that's great too that's great too I would say, Chris, you probably have access to the chat and you know who's in the room. And if you're interested in partnering with any of the organizations who are here this afternoon, you please feel free to reach out to any of the folks who are here in the room. So, yeah. Hanmei, there's uh, a question from Elise in the chat too. Oh, thank you. Uh -huh. So it's, what is the historic amount of weekly pounds slash servings that are distributed through this program. And maybe that is a Leslie, the contract monitor response. Great question, Elise. Uh, Leslie, do you happen to know on the top of your head what the historic amount per week? I don't, um, but definitely could work with my team to um, formulate a response. It'll be, you know, because of the different program areas, we'll probably want to look at that and before answering off the cuff. <laughs> Great. Thank we'll you. We'll post that. Yep. Yep. Elise will definitely post this question in the Q&A within five business days. And Elise, just to clarify this, um, are you looking at both SFC and MPC for food banks and MUS program or just a specific network? Um, yeah, I'd be curious to know for both. Um, mostly just trying to grasp, you know, what volume of food is actually being distributed. Is it tens of thousands of pounds? Um, is it hundreds of pounds? Uh, just trying to get a feel for that number. So any information on that would be helpful. Great, thank you. Yep, yeah, we'll we'll definitely do our homework and uh, post the answers on the website. I see a hand, but I still again it says sixteen participants, and there's a hand. I can't see who that hand belongs to. So if you do have a question, please just feel free to unmute and ask. I think it's Beverly's hand that is up and maybe um, she just forgot to bring it down from the last question. I just looked, it tells me I can raise my hand, but it doesn't tell me I can lower my hand. So I don't think it's me, unless I can have two hands. Beverly, I can go ahead and lower your hand. Um, if you don't have a question, I do have that feature. Yeah, Thank Teams you. is so weird sometimes. All right, are there additional questions? Okay. All right, I don't see any additional questions, but also just as a reminder, you do have an opportunity to email me your questions before the deadline. Uh, I believe it's March 27 uh, by 5 p.m. So please, um, if as you are preparing to your responses and if you run across any questions, please feel free to email me before the deadline. Again, um, I can only do it via email. Uh, we simply can't do phone calls and tell you the answers off the cuff. So, um, and then what's what happens uh, when we get your email is we will only respond it via the HSD website. So we'll post your question and then the response to it within the HSD website within five business days. Um, I just want to remind everybody this information session uh, is being recorded. So if you want to review uh, any of this um, information that's being shared today, you can definitely go back to the HSC Funding Opportunity website within five business days. We will upload this uh, video file as well as the PowerPoint 
on the HSD funding website. Um, that's where we'll find all the information. And then please routinely go back to the website to check any changes in terms of dates and any newly posted uh, Q&A as well. Good luck everybody to this process. Just make sure you apply because if you don't apply, we can't consider you as part of the process. So just make sure you turn it in on time. All right, thank you everybody. And thank you to my fellow colleagues for helping to support this session this afternoon. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Tanmi. Thank you. I think, Janelle, you can stop. Probably.